I'm Brett Osmond, and welcome to a new edition of Random Book Talk. I'm very excited to have international best-selling author of 30 books, Susan Lewis, here in the studio today. Her latest book, No Child of Mine, is currently our book of the month. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. I finished reading No Child of Mine late last night, actually, and I have to admit to needing a tissue there at the end, it was a very emotional and, um, and quite suspenseful story. Um, can you tell us a little bit about it? Right. Well, I'm glad you found it to be emotional and suspenseful. Obviously, that was what I set out to achieve. As I'm always fascinated by the story behind the news. And in the case of this book, the main character, Alex, is a child protection worker. Mm. And they are people who seem to be damned if they do and damned if they don't. It's very, very, very difficult to get children um, away from abusive families. You may not realize that, but it is. And when Alex comes upon this dear little girl, Ottilie, who's only three, um, she has a real struggle to prove that something is going on because Ottilie's father is a very clever man and he knows how to play the system. Um, and her mother is weird, <laughs> as uh, I'm sure you read. Yes. So, um, yeah, so I was just, it, it, really what inspired it was because I've seen so many social workers being lambasted, really, really giving a bad time by the press. And I, I, I want to know what the story is behind all of that. Well, your research is exceptional. I mean, I, it felt that you really understood uh, the work of a social worker and the obstacles in their path. Mm -hmm. And Alex, like all the characters in the book, is an incredibly well-rounded individual. Mm -hmm. I cared for her and Jason and and Ottilie. Um, how do you do it? You've written 30 books mm. and uh, that sense of story and of character, um, if anything, I think gets stronger with each book. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad you find that. Maybe I'm getting a little more used to doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's, as long as I completely identify with the character, then I can hope that you will. If I'm not getting it right with that character, then how can I expect you to like or feel anything for the character? Yeah. And I did actually get it quite wrong with Alex when I first started writing this book. I had the look of her wrong. And interestingly, that made a big difference. Once I changed the look of her, she started to become her own person. And she's quite feisty. She, she won't take any messing. She wants that little girl. She wants that girl out of there. And she'll fight. She, uh, whereas I think when the first time I was writing her, I didn't make her as feisty as she needed to be. Once I let her have her own voice, she just took over. She's a great character, Thank and you. I really identified with her. Thank so it's you. interesting that it, it didn't happen initially. No. Um, so is that typical of your writing style, that you might get some way into a book and then decide, I haven't got that character right? I need to start again. That it, certainly can happen. Right. I mean, I've even set sail, as it were, without the main character on board really? before. And I'm kind of looking around, why isn't this working? Yeah. And if I look back at the dock, there's the main character. <laughs> Hi, you went okay. without me. Yeah. And, and then everything starts to come together. Okay. I think that's a, a partly these days to do with doing, uh, writing two books a year because I don't have so much turnaround time no. to really think about how I'm going to approach you it. You must so be working every day. Exactly. Yeah. The thinking process happens with the writing. So I can get halfway through or more before I, I'm just not pulling this together properly. Mm -hmm. With No Child of Mine, what I realized when I was about three quarters of the way through that one is that I had two books on my hands. Mm. That there was no point trying to get it all into one book. Well, that's exciting to hear, having just <laughs> finished No Child of Mine. It does finish with the possibility of another story. I mean, obviously, it, it felt to me it did stand alone, mm. um, but it was very suspenseful at the end. Yeah. So, so we have six months or, to wait before yeah. uh, there's the conclusion? You have. I can uh, let you know that I have been in New Zealand researching it, uh, and 
it felt absolutely the right place to be. I mean, those, the characters, of course, now I know the characters because I've written one book, uh, so I'm less likely to get them wrong this time around. Uh, they were so at home in the Bay of Islands. It was absolutely the right place to go. Well, very exciting for your mm. readers. I mean, one of the joys for, for fans of yours is that there are 30 books mm. that they can discover. Um, do you get a lot of uh, fan mail from, from readers? Do they ask you to bring back characters? Oh, yeah. I do get that quite a lot, actually. I mean, and it's wonderful because yeah. it means that obviously the characters have meant as much to them as they have to me because when I finish writing a book I find it quite difficult to let the characters go mm -hmm. and so if you find that you're feeling that when you're reading a book then that's fantastic I've done my job it's also um, a little I feel a little sad because I feel like I'm letting a reader down in a way mm -hmm. uh, because they want to know more and I'm leaving it to them uh, to decide how they think it will go. I mean, I'm going to give you some good direction on sure. where it's going to go, but they want more of the story. And, and I, I can't say I will never write a sequel, as indeed yes. I'm, going, I'm doing one now, but I don't do it often. No. And, and the possibility of three books a year is probably out of the question. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> And when we're just touching on the research, uh, it, it really was evident to me that you, you really knew what you were writing about. And as a reader, uh, that came across and I really responded to that. Um, do you spend a lot of time reaching, researching your, your books? Well, I spend as much as I can. I mean, this was quite a tricky one to research, actually, because of uh, really getting the social workers, the child protection workers, to talk to me about their jobs because you know, where children are concerned it's very very delicate and, uh, and very confidential I certainly uh, would not be able to go into a family court then the lawyers would talk to me about the family lawyers would talk to me about it the social workers would talk to me about it what I did get from the social workers which was fantastic were a lot of case stories with no names and a lot of how they feel how certain children do touch them more deeply and how some children are quite difficult to warm to and interestingly they seem to do even more for them because they feel guilty for not perhaps loving them as much as the pretty one or the one who's a little more chatty or mm. you know and, and it was just fascinating listening to the relationships that they build up yeah yeah I can imagine and, mm. and confronting at the same time Absolutely. Well, and because, of course, some of the children can be quite violent with them sure. uh, and offensive and, uh, yeah, mm, they have some awful things happen. Sure. So I haven't congratulated you, Susan, on your top five bestseller in the UK at the moment with a previous novel, uh, No Turning Back, yeah. uh, which was a, a different story to mm -hmm. No Child of Mine. All your books, however, deal with family relationships, um, family dramas, and uh, the dynamics between various situations, Alzheimer's as a theme, uh, separation, loss, uh, divorce, uh, are common themes, mm. uh, abduction even, in, in your books. Um, what inspires you to write about families and personal relationships? Well, I get, I'm quite fascinated by the way people deal with the challenges that life throws at them. I mean, some people just get the most difficult things come their way, and somehow they get through it. And they are the people that always fascinate me the most. Now, uh, and, and that's why I try to give some of the very difficult issues that ordinary people have to deal with. In other words, ordinary people dealing with extraordinary circumstances. And and how they go about that. Because it can finish some people off, you know, it, to lose a child, to have, a, you talked about abduction, mm. to have a child stolen, mm. it can be the end of a parent, mm. as you knew that once knew that person. Or indeed, even to lose a child you know, to death. It's, it, that's probably the most difficult thing that people would face. But then you, there's that awful loss later in life of, couple who've been together for a long time 
and one of them starts to become lost in the wilderness of dementia. And that's very, very challenging, a really difficult thing. And what really matters to me is when I get emails from readers who say that, and particularly with Forgotten, uh, the book that mentions dementia, well, talks a lot about dementia, uh, was how helpful they had found it to read of how it feels from the perspective of somebody with dementia who knows that his mind is going. And they found that helpful. I don't know why they found it helpful, but, um, but obviously I'm really glad that they did. Now, I had to make it up because I don't have dementia myself yet, I hope. <laughs> um, and obviously those that do, by the time you get around to talking to them, can't describe it. So I have to imagine how I would feel if I realized that my mind was going, um, or imagine how I would feel if my child was taken, or if my child was severely damaged in a road accident, um, sure. or if my child caused a road accident that took the life of, of another teenager, you know, and that's in Losing You, my book Losing You, where, um, uh, you know, a teenage boy who's drunk drives a car into a teenage girl who is a gifted musician and changes their life forever. Now for our last question, which we ask of all of our authors, Susan, what is the book that most affected your life and why? Okay, I would say for me, it was, believe it or not, one of my own books, um, Stolen Beginnings, N not for the reasons that you might think, uh, but this was a book, it was my third book, and I had more or less finished writing it. I was over 600 pages in, and this is a long book, this one, and I lost the whole thing on the computer. Oh, no. So it meant that was the end of my career in television and the beginning of my career as a full-time author. So that was the book that changed everything for me, actually. Well, that's an amazing story and, and obviously this, you've been incredibly successful at it. So thank you very much, um, you. Susan, for coming into the studio today. It's lovely to have you in Australia and, and great that uh, No Child of Mine is in stores now, as are all your books. Thank Thanks you. again. If you would like to download a sample chapter of No Child of Mine, head now to randomhouse.com.au. You can also sign up to our e-newsletter where you'll find more details about the next edition of Random Book Talk. Mm -hmm.